edition of the Pro Football Focus IDP Podcast, The Nickel. I am once again your host, Walton Sperlin, and as we take a look back at Week 16, which likely decided a lot of fantasy championships, and a look forward to Week 17, which will definitely decide the rest of the fantasy championships, I am happy, as always, to be joined by one of the most respected, best and brightest minds in all the IDP land, Mr. Ross Miles. Um, Merry Christmas, Wally. It's, uh, it's nice to speak. It's just after the big day, obviously. Um, I had a great time. Got my main present on Christmas Eve with the Rams making the playoffs, which was uh, which was pleasing. It was a tighter game than I would have expected, though, against the Titans. Yes, but uh, as you mentioned, ultimately you got the trip to the playoffs, and what I got here back in Detroit was a blizzard that night on Christmas Eve, making driving treacherous. And then, of course, a, a Detroit Lions loss, which eliminated them from the playoffs. What else is new? But again, Merry Christmas to you as well, Ross. A little bit belated, but uh, I will not let the Lions season once again damper my outlook because we've got a lot to get to. As I mentioned, we're going to take a look back at uh, some of the news and notes as well as some top performances in Week 16. And then we'll we'll take a look at what should be a pretty interesting week 17 as I've always found it's pretty tricky to get a real handle on how all the teams are going to approach their their particular games but we're going to give you all of our insights and the information we think that you'll need to uh, bring home that championship if you're still deciding it so let's jump into the news and it's not often Ross that this late in the season there's a signing which you know probably won't help fantasy owners but it's very interesting as we head into the NFL playoffs with the New England Patriots signing outside linebacker James Harrison formerly of the Steelers yeah definitely I mean like you say it's, it's not really particularly fancy relevant but it is defensive and you know Harrison has been an, an excellent contributor for fancy gamers throughout the years it's, it's intriguing based on you know he's obviously moving from the Steelers to the Patriots how does this impact um, their potential repeat meeting in, in the playoffs, so we're fully expecting them to play off in the AFC Championships. Um, it's just that little bit of colour, isn't it? Um, if the Patriots needed any extra edge, that is. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. You know, Of course, uh, the, the one of the main lines of thought here is that you know they'll be picking Harrison's brain you know, for all the information they can get on the, the Steelers' offense, which obviously he's, he's very well versed in, and you know, and also the man, you know, I think he played a total of 40 snaps, so he, he's got fresh legs. We've probably all seen the video of him working out, like, after games. You know, the, the man's in shape. You know, it'll be, you know, how fast, you know, they, they can get him into their, you know, their scheme along those lines. But, you know, they brought him in to do what he does best, you know, besides the information, and that's to get after the quarterback. And that, that's something that he can definitely do. And, again, as we've mentioned throughout this season on many a podcast, you know, the, the – Patriots are, are a team that's looking for help in the pass rush, and they you know, went out and got somebody you know pre- pretty darn good at it uh, late in the season. So that that's going to be real interesting to see how that plays out. And another interesting situation, which I, I think we can maybe file under the "be careful what you say when the cameras are around," and that's uh, something that Earl Thomas uh, said after their uh, victory over the Cowboys. Yeah, so you know, not not long after he's had a pop at um, Bobby Wagner for being on the field, he's now been spotted talking to um, Jason Garrett and saying, "quote If y'all get a chance to come at me, come come get me." So you know, this is Thomas. He's in. A, is, is this is his contract year for him, or is it next year? But he's looking to potentially get out of Seattle. I think there's going to be a lot of change on that defense. Yeah, I believe you're right, and uh, and of course, you know, uh, Thomas, uh, he did play football for the University of Texas. I mean, he is under contract next year for 8.5 million in Seattle. But I think you touch on an interesting point. You know, there was that little tiff, and we we talked briefly about it. You know, uh, where he thought Bobby Wagner shouldn't have played. Bobby Wagner said, "Keep my name out of your mouth. Don't be jealous." You know, and um, you know maybe Earl, you know, is just feeling that maybe his time in Seattle and as you mentioned I think there are going to be some changes you know they they fired their defensive oh no that was Oakland that got rid of Ken Norton Jr. I was thinking back to that sorry but no they their defense hasn't been what it was there's been injuries obviously Chancellor Sherman but uh you know Earl's maybe looking out for Earl and, and, and wanting to go back home and you know and play for the Cowboys but that'll be interesting to see they they, they just kind of played it off after Pete Carroll saying he was just having fun and he didn't remember saying it but 
I think he did. So we'll see how long. It's going to be an interesting offseason in Seattle. I mean, they still have a chance to make the playoffs. they got to take care of some business, and I'm, I'm not certain if they need some help. But anyway, it's going to be going to be fun to keep an eye on what uh, what goes on in Seattle in the offseason. And I'll tell you what's no fun. That's the pretty much the whole New York Giants season. Uh, we can put a capper on it. Uh, Landon Collins is now out for the season with a broken right forearm. Ross, perhaps they should have listened to our podcast uh, a couple of weeks back when we suggested going ahead and shutting him down with the ankle issue. Well, they didn't. He played, broke his right forearm. Now he's done for the season. But he's not done talking. True, true. Yeah, he's out for the season, but he's now gone on record and called uh, first-round cornerback and teammate Eli Eli Apple a cancer. Um, and we've got a quote here. It says, there's only just one corner that needs to grow, and we all know who that is. Um, that first pick, he's a cancer. That was Colin's words. Uh, wow, that's pretty strong to come out in the media and say something like that. Um, you know, this is the team that's got Janoris Jenkins on the roster and uh, DRC. Both have been suspended earlier in the season. Um, they're known to be um, some quite boisterous characters. So, yeah, for Collins to come out and say that, that's, uh, that's an intriguing. Right, and he did try to do a little bit of backtracking today as I was researching for the show. I went out and he did put out a tweet uh, probably about two hours ago now, and I, I jotted it down here in my notes, and he put up, I met with Coach Spags and Eli, and I'm assuming that's Apple, this morning and apologized for the things I said yesterday. I never stopped supporting my brother, teammate Eli, and the rest of my teammates as we move forward. Just want him to know I'm always here for him. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and chalk that up to the PR department for the Giants saying you need to put something out. And boy, Ross, it, it, this is just kind of the... Uh, the Giants season. This is the cherry on the horrible Sunday that has been the Giants season. I mean, the benching of Eli, the firing of their head coach. I mean, this is a team in disarray. And um, well, we'll close out some of the notes. Just uh, and they placed B.J. Goodson, somebody who we were high on early in the season, week one. You know, came flashing out of the gates. We thought maybe the Giants had that middle linebacker they have so longed for, and. They finally put him on injured reserve as he was pretty much dealing with a leg injury, it seems like, from week two on. But um, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Yes, it's been a really tough season. Yeah, I mean, like you say, they're trying to cover up the the, the issues in the secondary over there with, like you say, a very PR-orientated tweet. But at the end of the day, Eli, like, Eli Apple didn't play a single snap last week, and now Goodson's on injured reserve. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a mess. I mean, Goodson, what do we think about him for next season is, is, is worth asking. I think he, he did flash some potential, but um, my enthusiasm for him won't be as high as it was when we first saw him on step on the field. Um, you know, we have seen players have persistent injury issues. Sean Lee, for example, perhaps Goodson's going to be one of those guys as well. Um, and if so, it really caps his value. Yeah, that's, again, another situation to monitor in the offseason throughout OTAs, training camp, because, yeah, as you mentioned, Goodson did flash. You know, he it was a, put up solid tackle numbers. But, as you said, maybe we have to wait and see if he's going to be one of those guys that continues to get nicked up or maybe just, you know, his first taste of starting and, uh, you know, unfor- and getting an unfortunate injury early in the season. Maybe that's, this was just a fluke year for injuries, and, you know, he can be somebody we trust. But, as you said, it's going to have to kind of give him the side eye you know, until we see a little bit more consistency from him. And, um, you know, again, the Giants continue to look for that uh, middle linebacker that did solidify that defense. But just as we kind of mentioned in Seattle, I think there's going to be a lot of changes in New York as well, obviously starting with the coaching staff. We'll see who comes in and what philosophy they bring, what scheme, what they want to do moving forward. Uh, I guess one last quick thing, and I know we'll do waiver wire later, but if you're really hurting for uh, uh, someone in the secondary, it looks like this Andrew Adams fella has been the replacement when Collins has gone out. He has put up 11 solos in the last two games. I guess if you're desperate and there's nobody else out there, there, there's a name. Let's just uh, file it under that. And now let's go ahead and let's start looking at some top performers from last week along the defensive line. And this first one brings a smile to my face, and, and, and I like to see him doing this late, even in a loss. But uh, Ziggy Ansa of my Detroit Lions had himself a really nice week. Yeah, he did. Um, he's finally got going as we've got later into the season. Obviously, he's had injury issues, but he had three sacks last week and rounded it out with seven total tackles. So I believe that was a season high in 
for him in, in total tackles in the game and in tied a season high for sacks. So pretty impressive performance. Um, did you see anything in particular that he was getting done on the field? I, I think for me, he looked as healthy as he has. And I know, again, they've been limited in his, his practice reps, you know, kind of the thing with last year. As he, you know, And he's had both a ankle and a back issue this year. Uh, obviously, I will also mention this because during the game, they, they were kind of forgetting it. One of the three sacks is he just happened to push the quarterback out of bounds before the quarterback could get back to the line of scrimmage. So, But, hey, it counts. You know, and it comes for fantasy purposes. What I like, though, is he has a chance to finish the season with double digits. You know, he's got the nine right now, uh, a matchup with the Packers, you know, pretty much in a meaningless game. But I think it's got some meaning for Ziggy because, as we talked about a few weeks ago and we've mentioned a few times, this is a contract year for him. So I, you know, I, I think he'd feel a lot better with, with this finish. And, again, you mentioned the tackle totals. That was Those were very nice you know, and, and something that he hasn't, you know, really been known for but I think everything Ziggy's doing right now he's going to be bringing to the negotiating table so you know he's it's 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 nice to see and I'd like to see him you know, obviously stay here in Detroit I think when healthy he can be a disruptive force and we'll see how that plays out but but somebody else who's been a, di- a disruptive force is, is Cameron Hayward of uh, the aforementioned Steelers who let Harrison go but he he has certainly been on a tear <clears throat> yeah, he has. Uh, he's set a career high in sacks this season with 12. Um, added two to his total last week. Added a forced fumble as well. So he was a, he was a real d- <clears throat> dynamic playmaker. Yeah, as you said, Hayward had a great season. It was a good matchup last uh, last week. And uh, I believe we talked about uh, Stefan Tewitt potentially having a good match. Uh, and he did. He had a sack as well. So Yeah, uh, start your defensive lineman against the Texans, folks. It's uh, or your edge rushers. They they've they've been giving up the sacks ever since the Deshaun Watson got hurt. And um, well, Trey Flowers had had a, had a nice week for the New England Patriots. We'll talk a little bit about that, and then uh, we'll talk about a, a, a surprising different Flowers for the Patriots a little bit later on. But Trey Flowers put up some nice tackle numbers last week. He did. He he had eight. Um, it's been a weird year for Trey Flowers. I I expect him to kick on a little bit more, um, but he, he, surprisingly, he hasn't really hasn't felt like an impact fantasy player but he's been consistent when he's been on the field and that's kind of got him points in only 13 starts he's had what 59 tackles now um six and a half sacks which has kind of let him down i do i still see plenty of upside in him moving forwards um i think he's sh- i don't think i'll be quite as aggressive in trying to get him on my roster next year but if he's falling to me as my third or fourth choice defensive end i'd be pretty happy to take him i think next year Right, and I think that rib injury that he suffered a couple of weeks ago slowed him down, and you make a good point that it might have slowed him down just enough where some people might sleep on him a bit, you know, because, because he went into a little bit of a funk there, and, you know, again, as we give you everything you need to know, we're already talking draft next year, but, uh, yeah, he, he could be somebody that slips a little bit just because it, if you just look at his season numbers, you don't remember the injury, you'll just see that, wow, he went, you know, a few weeks there where not only didn't he play, he didn't put up much, but someone who has been putting up, and uh, a lot of sacks lately. That's and we haven't talked about him all year. So let's give a shout out to Preston Smith. Yeah, he's had a good little run. He's had three in his last two games. Uh, two of them came last week. Five tackles as well. So yeah, Preston Smith. Hats off to him for having a good week. Yep. And the final man we're going to talk about. I, I feel we've probably talked about as much as any player this year, and deservedly so. And that's Calais Campbell of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Even in a, a, a sort of embarrassing loss. Mr. Campbell just keeps producing. He did. Didn't get to the quarterback. He only uh, had eight total tackles, but it was still a bona fide day. A few of those were for loss, I believe. Um, but he's obviously having a career season, uh, set career bests for sacks and forced fumbles with four and a half and, and three, respectively. But a half decent week uh, next week uh, just needs a couple of to- three total tackles to tie his sec- second best ever total for uh, tackles. So, uh, yeah. Gilles Campbell's really been putting in the numbers, and I'm glad we clued into him early in the preseason. Yeah, hopefully, folks, listen to that preseason show where we, you know, uh, debated the the chance for double digit sacks, and boy, he blew by that with 14 and a half. So we'll uh, let's pat ourselves on the back a little bit for that because we sort of cued folks into that uh, situation, and now let's let's cue them into the waiver wire, and hopefully, folks, you've already gone out. It, it's up. It's posted. Read Ross's weekly. IDP waiver wire article at Pro Football Focus. I know it's it's always one of the first I read, and and this na- this first name is, is someone who who's been in the article a couple of times. Yeah, uh, Stefan Tuitt. I think we need to go back to the well. 
Um, he's got another excellent matchup against Cleveland this week. Um, he did us a favour with his, you know, we named him when he had a sack last week, so let's hope he does it again. It's, it's a great matchup, and I do think, still think he'll be available in, in many leagues. If you've already got him from last week's pickup, good for you. You can you can roll him out again. Right, and uh, as we mentioned, week 17 can kind of be a, a difficult week to uh, navigate, but I think one of the, the mainstays you want to keep in mind is, is try and start some players on teams that have something to play for, and of course the Steelers still have a shot at home field throughout. They would need a New England loss to the Jets. Sort of unlikely, but they do still have something to play for. So I always like, and if, I, if I am playing in a league where Week 17 is involved, you know, try to get some guys, you know, you want good matchups, but you also want guys that are probably going to play most of the game because their team needs the win. And that's also the case with this next gentleman we're going to mention because, again, the, the Seahawks are, are still battling for a possible wild card spot. And uh, this is another name we haven't mentioned, and this is why you need to, to read Ross's article and listen to our waiver wire suggestions. Go ahead and tell the folks who they need to be picking up from Seattle. Yeah, let's go with Brandon Jackson. Now, this is week 17, and, and as Wally's hinting at, you know, you do get some weird ones, although we do expect Seattle to be going all guns blazing. But essentially what we're doing this week is we're looking for people that have got a great matchup and I think have the potential to do something. If you're a defensive lineman, that means get a sack now. Jackson last week played 44 of 74 snaps, so I'm expecting to see something similar this week. That means he's going to be on the field. The Cardinals have allowed 12 sacks since week 10, so it's clearly a, a prime matchup. On, on that basis, this is a guy who no one's going to be owning. Um, but, you know, he hasn't really been an, in, an impact player all season, but he's going to be on the field and he's going to be in a good matchup. That's, that's what we're looking for. So Brandon Jackson, Seattle Seahawks. Right, and, and something that we've talked about uh, throughout the year too, although I believe he did manage to get a sack last week, but Michael Bennett dealing with a foot issue. He's been playing through it, so maybe a chance for some increased snaps there for Jackson and, and a very nice matchup. And now we're going to move on to the linebackers. And it was a, it was a week for some you know names that, that we've seen throughout the season. We'll start with a couple of mainstays. Uh, one, a youngster, Deion Jones, another big week uh, for the Falcons there. Yeah, wow, this guy has been absolute gold during the playoffs for his owners. Um, he added well, 10 tackles last week and an interception is all great in Week 16, the Fantasy Championship. But you know, going back to what was potentially the start of your Fantasy Championships, over the last three weeks, he's had 32 total tackles and that added a couple of interceptions. So he has really been doing his owners plenty of favours after what was probably a bit of a slow start. Right, and again, that's everything we want from our, our LB1s. That's, that's solid tackle numbers and then also the big plays that he's putting up. And if you want to talk about solid tackle numbers, we'll just, we'll just talk about the veteran. Uh, we've mentioned him a little bit as far as someone who, who dealt with injuries, but when he's on the field, the man is just a tackling machine. And let's, let's tip our cap to Sean Lee of the Dallas Cowboys. Sean Lee, indeed. 14 last week he had. Um, oh, again, this is another player who's been really putting in the work during the fantasy playoffs. 18, 10 and 14 total tackles in those last three games. If you've had Lee on your roster, you've definitely been smiling. Right. And this this next name is someone, and I, I believe we've mentioned it, but probably not. There was another vigil I know that we liked was Nick Vigil, but the vigil to... To, to be targeting of late due to the injury to Zach Brown in Washington is Zach Vigil of the Redskins. Yeah, it was his first double-digit tackle performance of the season, but he racked up 14 and added a fumble recovery. So if you're looking for a vigil, this is this is the one, Week yep. 17. Yep, and he's got a great matchup with the Giants in Week 17, folks. They're, they're giving it up to linebackers. They did it again last week to Dion Buchanan and, and even Carlos Dansby. I think playing with a bad hip managed to get 10 tackles against the Giants. So, yeah, keep, you know, keep keep Vigil in mind. And now let's move on to a name that's going to surprise some folks and had a really big week for the New England Patriots. That's Marquise Flowers. Yeah. Um, we've, we've found Neuer. He got the start in the middle, and uh, he put up some numbers. Not only did he get 10 tackles, he also got two and a half sacks, and um, I think he's one to, to keep a little eye on. Again, could be worth a play this week, depending on Van Noy's status. Right, well, I completely agree. And, and you, know, you know, you see a name like that, you see a performance like that, you want to dig a little bit deeper. So I, you know, went and looked at some of our stats at Pro Football Focus, and this was the second time in the last three weeks that Marquise Flowers played over 50 snaps. And again, that has to do with Van Noy. But I think you put up a performance like that, you know, and again, you know, twice in the last three weeks you've, put, you've played 50 snaps. The, the team's pretty comfortable with you, and I would not be surprised. And, uh, again, spoiler alert for my start-sit 
article this week. I would not be surprised to see Flowers start again, and I would go as far as say he should be starting in fantasy lineups as well. Yeah, I would agree. Yep. And and then uh, another youngster who I'm very excited about, especially heading into next season, but he has really come on of late, and that is Zach Cunningham of the Texans. Yeah, another player uh, making his first double-digit tackle performance of the season. But as you say, it's come come at the right time of the year. Zach Cunningham, 10 total tackles last week, added three passes defense as well. Uh, he's really stepped up into that three-down role. And again, as you said, I think he's someone we want to clue in on for next year. Yeah, and, and it seems like every week we're going to talk about one of the Cleveland Browns linebackers, and, and this is one whose name hasn't been up there as many times, but we have touched on him, but it was a good week for James Burgess Jr. Certainly was. He had uh, nine total tackles, three of which were for a loss, and that is a sack. Um, it was an impact week for Burgess, who has been a, a valuable fantasy asset. Uh, you wouldn't have wanted to start him every week, but if you pick the right ones, you certainly got some big paydays this year. Yeah, boy, that, that, that has certainly just... Uh, been a fantasy gold mine that line, linebacker position for Cleveland with all, with Schobert, Kirksey. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Collins has been out for a while, but that's again something to keep in mind as, as we head into the off season and, and looking forward to next season. You know, that, those are those are some nice some nice names to remember. And now let's uh, speaking of names to remember, let's talk a little bit about the waiver wire. And then I've got a special Los Angeles Rams questions for. For, for Ross that I'm going to throw out there. But let's start with the, with the first two gentlemen that uh, that you like this week, and, and, and let's start in Tennessee. Yeah, um, again, we're playing the good old Week 17. We just, we're just looking almost purely for matchup and opportunity. Um, when it gets to linebackers, opportunity essentially means a three-down position or you're on the field for a th- in a three-down role. And Avery Williamson uh, of the Titans has the best matchup next week, uh, well, this week, against the Jags. He's going to play three downs. Uh, for that reason, I think he's someone we want to pay close attention to there you have it folks get get Avery Williamson and as we mentioned last week if you're picking anybody up off the waiver wire they belong in your starting lineup because there is no tomorrow and this next gentleman I've, I've always just liked because anytime he stepped in he, he's put up numbers and it just you know it, it doesn't happen all the time because obviously he hasn't won a starting position but when it's push comes to shove and the Chicago Bears need somebody to step up at the linebacker position Nick Kwiatkowski gets it done yeah, Kwiatkowski has been uh, intriguing this year from a fantasy perspective. He was someone we wanted to key in on early in the year. He stepped up, when, it, as you say, when there was injuries. But then he got injured himself, and he's missed a fair chunk of time. But last three weeks, he's played over 80% of snaps. Um, we're going back to the old, what I'm saying for Week 17, just pure matchups, and he gets the third-best matchup against the Vikings. He's going to be in a three-down role. He's in a great matchup. He's someone I like. Yeah, there you have it, folks. And again, read the article, Ross Miles, IDP waiver wire options at Pro Football Focus. Now, I wanted to uh, touch base with you, Ross, you're a big Rams fan, so you're keyed in on the situation. Uh, they've already come out. Uh, McVay, I believe, has already come out and said he's going to rest some starters. Uh, he'd, he'd rather have healthy players heading into the playoffs as opposed to risking injury to move from third seed to fourth seed. That's as, uh, as high as they can go in there and so what jumps out to me right away is well first of all Mark Barron was a late scratch last week after not appearing on the injury report apparently he's had a, a knee issue that he's been dealing with they decided to rest him last week and Alec Ogletree is kind of banged up right now um, would you be surprised if McVeigh didn't sit those guys and, and and if they do dress how confident would you be starting them in a game where he said he's going to rest starters um, I wouldn't want to play either. Um, oh yeah, I, I would. I, Ogletree's been hurt a bit this season anyway, I think as well. So um, I, I listened to a press conference the other day, and he he was specifically you named know, Ogletree and Barron as guys that have been playing banged up. On that basis, I think you know we'll, we'll see a dose of Corey Littleton, um, maybe a Bukum as well. But, but I, yeah, I, I would have to walk away from starting either of those players in the Week 17 Championship. I'm afraid. Right. That, I just wanted to touch on that, and I also jotted down Corey Littleton. Played 68 snaps last week. I had him a very nice week, a top 10 week. Uh, modest tackle numbers, seven total tackles, but he had a sack and an interception, and I think that's, you know, as you mentioned, that's probably who, who will draw the lion's share of the work if those two are sat. But, yeah, Ogletree, Barron, avoid him this week, folks. Uh, that might be in matchups, and if I jump the gun on that, it's just because I wanted to make sure I got that question in for Ross because I know he's – He's keyed in on the Rams. So now that'll take us to defensive backs. 
And boy, when you look down this list, uh, well, the top two names, that's almost a who's who of in the preseason who we liked. And, and that's, of course, uh, Harrison Smith of the Vikings and, and Rashad Jones of the Dolphins. Um, go ahead and talk a little bit about their performances. Yeah, Harrison Smith had uh, eight tackles, two interceptions. It was a typical Harrison Smith game this season. Uh, he's He's been a, a DB1 all year, but he hasn't posted a single double-digit tackle performance. So it's, it's, it's been strange in that sense, but he makes enough splash plays to, to make it work, and he continues to do that, and last week was a prime example. And then, oh yeah, Rashad Jones as well. Obviously, that guy's been a monster all year. Um, he's been the clear number one fantasy defensive back with poorer seasons out of Landon Collins um, 15 total tackles last week 12 of which was solo that's where he gets caught so many of his points from he racks up all those tackle points and then just adds the splash plays even without his splash plays he'd probably be pushing close for number one defensively one, number one fantasy defensive back yeah the only thing that's ever stopped Rashad Jones is injury you know if he's ever healthy folks he's, he's always uh, to me that the, the, the first I thought Landon Collins just because Jones was coming off an injury would push him this year for the number one overall. That didn't happen. Rashad Jones reclaimed the title, you know, after missing some time last year with injury. He's he's just a solid performer. And somebody who used to be a solid performer hadn't really stepped up much this year and didn't look like he had a great matchup last week. But again, he's helped me win some championships in the past, so I'm happy to see Reggie Nelson's name on here. Yeah, as you say, it was probably his first big fantasy game of the season, so Unlikely that anyone was starting him because he'd just been a little bit disappointing this year. But six tackles, a forced fumble, and an interception definitely made him relevant last week. Reggie Nelson. Right. And I'll tell you, this this next name, it, it, it had me searching the roster. It had, it had me researching who? And that is Mike Hilton, cornerback, yeah. who had three sacks. Indeed, yeah. Um, even after doing a little bit of research, I was still had kind of scratching my head a little bit. Three sacks force fumble and six total tackles for Mike Hilton um, he it wasn't like a big uptick in snaps or anything he was playing his usual kind of role um, playing 50-ish 60% of snaps so um, great game at the right time but probably didn't help anyone in fantasy right he had the kind of game that uh, you know any Steeler player that were owned was probably Sean Davis you, you would like a game like that from him perhaps he might have been in your lineup but I'll tell you this, if you had Mike Hilton in your lineup last week, you, you need to come on this show as a guest with me and Ross and, and teach us a thing or two because, yeah, I, I had to go had to go deep diving. But, you know, we, we give props where props are due. So great game, Mr. Hilton. And, well, Jordan Poyer, he just had another great game. He, he's, he's made a habit of that this season. Yeah, he certainly has. Uh, pick six, topped off with six total tackles. Um, another monster game uh, he's been a, a stud DB1 pretty much most of the time he's been on the field had a, a slight tight, a spell I believe of injury missed a week or two but yeah he's had a phenomenal season I think he'll be looking to return those numbers next season as well he'll be, probably be flirting with the top five. Oh, I agree with that completely and this is a name that's a, it's, it's been in our mouths uh, quite a bit down the stretch here Buddha Baker another big week for the Cardinals Indeed, it were you know Tyvon Branch was productive, and now Buddha Baker's continued to show that level of production. Thirteen total tackles last week. Uh, I think he's an intriguing pick for next season. It's going to be really interesting to see exactly how the Cardinals are going to want to tackle that situation. Um, Branch is obviously quite a, a well-known veteran, but a veteran being the, uh, the where the primary emphasis is a veteran who's had injuries as well. Baker looks like the future. Um, hopefully he'll get the start from week one and if so again here's another person who'll be knocking on the DB1 door right and you know speaking of veterans Antoine Bethay tore his pectoral last week actually had a decent game going but again that's another veteran and another veteran that over the past few seasons uh, much like Branch you know has battled has, has battled injuries so yeah uh, looks like Baker is the future there uh, what they do uh, who plays alongside him will be interesting to see because you know it's it's not a given that Bethay and Branch will be back. So, well, again, another off-season situation to to keep a keep a close eye on, and that'll move us now on to the waiver wire. And here's a, a, a secondary player from the Jets, and and it's certainly not the one that we were talking about early in the season. It's not Jamal Adams, it's Marcus May. Yeah, Marcus May. I, I, I mean, I would be happy with picking up Adams if he was available, but I have a feeling he might not be. But Marcus May has actually been pretty consistent this year, if, if not you know, if somewhat unspectacular. Four to seven total tackles in 
14 of 15 games. Uh, this week he's got the number one matchup for uh, defensive backs. The, the Pats, first time round, he wasn't particularly outstanding against them, but we've got to play the matchup, and he's and he's got that. He's going to be on the field, so I'm, I'm confident with this pick. I think he could have a good game, good week. I agree. I agree once again. This is why you read the article. This is why you listen to this section. And boy, let's go ahead and file this next name in the what took you so long, better late than never, T.J. Ward of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finally had a chance to play. He did. Uh, obviously, he raised it earlier in the season. Uh, this week, he's got a chance. He had a chance last week as well. Um, Justin Evans, unfortunately, found his way to IR after being quite productive in the position. But Ward was decent last week with 100% of the snaps, and he should be in a similar role again this week. So based on the fact that he's a former DB1, returning to playing every single snap, I think he's someone you've got to get on the right side of. Exactly. And, you know, and, the, and the concern there might have been, and I'm I'm going to go ahead and say I had TJ Ward on teams that I didn't have him in the lineup because you didn't know how that safety situation was going to play out even with Evans out because there was talk that Keith Tandy might see more snaps. You all, you know, you still got Chris Conte kicking around there. So it was nice to see Ward do this. It's 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 still been a mystery to me why it's taken him so long uh, to, to, to find a spot for him on that defense. I mean, this has not been a dominant defense. I mean, this has not been a good season for Tampa Bay. And for it to have taken what it took for Ward to make the field, I'm not certain what's going on at practice or, or, or what was happening there, but it was definitely nice to see the veterans step up. And that leads us now to the all-important matchup section. And we, as always, we're going to start out with some pass rushers that has positive matchups. You got that big play potential here. So you know some guys that can maybe get to the quarterback uh, due to their matchups. And and let's go ahead and start with uh, some Indianapolis Colts. Let's give some love to the Colts who haven't had the best of seasons. They really haven't. Um, obviously, with due process here, says the playing the. Playing the Texans means you're a great matchup, but whether they're great players you can exploit that is is another matter. Jabal Sheard has shown plenty in the past, but hasn't had a sack in the last six games, so I, I hesitate to say insert him into your lineup unless you're in an absolute desperation mode. If you wanted to pick a cult, I'd say Barcavius Mingo. He's had a sack in each of the last two weeks. This is an excellent matchup, so if he's ever going to make it three in a row, this will be the week. Right, and, and as we touched on, uh, you know, the, the Steelers took advantage of it last week. Start your edge rushers uh, against Houston. They they just I mean I don't even know who's going to be at quarterback for them uh, this week with both Yates and uh, Tyler Heineke. Uh, well, I guess Yates returned to the game after clearing the concussion protocol. Heineke didn't. Uh, I believe they brought Josh Jones back in just today. So um, whoever is the quarterback in Houston, he's going to be under duress. That's just been the modus operandi there. And we touched on this man earlier. He's having a career year, and now he's got a very nice matchup to close out uh, the 2017 regular season. That's that's Cam Hayward. Indeed, yeah. Hayward and Chewett, um, obviously we've hinted at both having decent weeks last week. We expect them to repeat uh, in another excellent matchup. Again, yeah, the Browns uh, having trouble protecting the quarterback, having trouble protecting the football. Uh, you, and I believe even if the Steelers weren't playing for you know potentially home field throughout the playoffs, they don't want to be the only team that loses to the Browns this year. So, the, as you mentioned earlier, I believe in describing a team, they're going to be coming out with guns blazing because they do not want to end up you know being the one victory on the Browns' record this season. So yeah, Hayward to it, great plays, and uh, someone who's been in a maybe a bit of a slump, but has the matchup to maybe cure what ails him is uh, Jadavian Clowney. Agreed. Yeah, Clowney. He hasn't had a sack for four weeks, but he's a player who was on a real hot streak come the middle of the season. Uh, he has nine on, on the year already, and he's won more t- double digits for the first time, and he's got a match up to do it. So, yeah, I'm going to side with Clowney this week to, to reach 10. Good call. Good call there, and uh, I'm sure this next player you probably won't bench, but as we often talk about, you're going to want to temper expectations but the the Raiders do not have a good matchup uh, against the Chargers this week as far as for getting to the quarterback no definitely not Chargers have been the toughest uh, this season so Khalil Max 10 and a half sacks probably won't grow this week and if you are for some reason considering playing Mario Edwards I would recommend you don't yeah it's going to be tough sled and again it's probably hard to bench Mac uh, just for that he's Khalil Mack but again 
maybe lower your expectations, but uh, I, I wouldn't want to be the fantasy owner that lost with Mac on my bench. So uh, I'd still have him out there and, and, and just hope hope he can make some things happen. Um, somebody who really, we, we were high on coming into the season, hasn't made a whole lot of things happen and, and really isn't in position to do that this week. And, and, and that's uh, Jerry Hughes. Yeah, Jerry Hughes. Mm, he made his first sack last week, which was the first since week four, but it's a really tough matchup against Miami. Um, so he he's, didn't help anyone when he finally got a sack. And if you were considering starting him because of it and you were desperate, please don't. Yeah, the, the, the stars are not aligning for, for Jerry to finish the, the season strong. All right, let's move on to some, some linebackers that we like to uh, – and we touched on one of these gentlemen earlier in the in the waiver wire, but we also like his partner in crime, and that would be our uh, Titan linebackers against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, Wesley Woodyard and Avery Williamson are the guys I want to clue in on here, and Woodyard himself has been pretty useful over the past few weeks, so he obviously continues to ride that wave, I think. Uh, Williamson, if you need to make a play, he's worth grabbing off the waiver wire. Yep. And we'd like a, a couple of Cincinnati Bengals, uh, again, a team that's pretty much had a season to forget, but, but they've given us some nice IDP options. And, and I'd like in, in the uh, show notes that, that, that Ross sends over that, that we use for this, as he's got Vontez perfect with the asterisk, and also Vincent Ray has good plays this week. Yeah, uh, Vontez perfect. I didn't play a full complement of snaps last week, so something was going on there. I didn't, didn't catch where he was injured. I didn't see anything when I... When I flick back through, obviously he had missed time previously because of his concussion. So whether that was a bit of a legacy issue. So if you are a perfect owner, you probably are going to want to start him in such a great matchup. But I'd, you need to just keep an eye on the uh, injury report and the news coming out of the camp. But the other guy in the lineup uh, who's going to be getting snaps will be Vincent Ray. Um, on that basis against the, the Ravens, I think you've got to put him in your lineup this week. Right, and I, I suppose a name to remember if for some reason uh, Burfecht is a late scratch or something if something happens, he doesn't play. You know, the, the rookie Jordan Evans, with the return of Burfecht last week, he, he he was knocked down to 16 snaps, but he generally has seemed to be the guy to, that steps in if Burfecht doesn't play. But we you know we don't have news that Burfecht's not going to play. And again, as Ross mentioned, the, the big caveat is how much is he going to play. But again, I don't want to be the IDP owner that – that loses in week 17 with perfect on my bench. So if he's active, he's got to be in there. And uh, we'll move on to another positive matchup for some linebackers. Again, one gentleman we've mentioned and another gentleman we've mentioned throughout the year because he's having a nice season. And that's we like our Chicago Bears in the matchup against the, the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, um, obviously we touched on Kiewitkowski already in the, in the way of a wire, but Danny Trevathan as well. Um, has been productive over the last few weeks, and that, that streak should continue against the Vikings. Good. So that's it. Get, get your Bears into your lineup. And now we'll flip the script and talk about some negative matchups. Boy, and we're just going to go ahead and throw a little more dirt on the grave that is the New York Giants season. If for some reason you're relying on either Calvin Shepard or Calvin Munson, you're not really going to have big weeks. No, I mean, both these guys are, are like waiver wire fodder for the desperate this week. Um, obviously, they're going to, well, Shepard in particular is going to be in a in a starting role, three-down role, but Washington's been such a bad matchup, I don't think this is where you want to turn your head. There'll be better options. Right, and, and, and hats off to you if you made it to your uh, Week 17 championship having to use Kelvin Shepard because uh, you, you've certainly done some juggling. And speaking of juggling, uh, this brings me to the uh, Chargers matchup with Oakland. And I'll tell you, Ross, there's nothing more confusing to me than what's going on uh, with with the Chargers and their linebacker situation. And now it's leaking over to, to my favorite guy, Adrian Phillips. You know, we thought maybe Jatavis Brown was going to step in, you know, with, with Perryman out. And, but I, I can't make heads or tails of it. Nope, exactly. I mean, partly I was going to say, uh, you should be running away from the situation full stop but you know double down on the bad matchup and the likes of Hayes Pollard, Corey Tuma, Jatavius Brown I just I'm not sure which direction to turn from a snap perspective and in a bad matchup it's just yeah it's, it's a no go it's a big big red light and it's flashing and there's an alarm going off right and I'm going to I'm going to add to that by also saying that, that remember and I mentioned it last week and, and I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong I thought the main beneficiary would be Adrian Phillips the safety, who's been basically almost playing a linebacker role. Uh, I'll break it down real quick. Pullard played 44 snaps. Corey Toomer, 25 snaps. Jatavis Brown only played 22 snaps. 
and Adrian Phillips only played 27 snaps last week. So now they've dragged him into it too. So I, I just, you know, yeah, you're going to start Bosa and Ingram. Bosa's due for a big game. He's gone three games without a sack. But, yeah, run. Now I say run away. Maybe you need a Jaleel Adai if you're desperate. But now I can't even touch Phillips because I don't know what they're doing with him. So uh, I'm washing my hands of it, and we're moving on to the matchup between Philadelphia and Dallas, and that's not a particularly good one for our Eagles linebackers. No, so, and it's a shame. Brad, Brad has been on a roll, 19 tackles in the last two games. So if you're a Bradham owner, you've probably been enjoying some of that performance from what's likely to be your LB3. And, and Kendricks as well has done flash bits and pieces, but Dallas are a bad matchup. So hopefully you've got alternative options rather than these two guys. Exactly. And uh, Philadelphia hasn't really come out and said if they're going to limit anybody's snaps uh, on the defensive side of the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Again, they've, they've all locked up home field, so I think it'd be prudent. So I, I think a lot of a lot of the Eagles, if I can just touch on that for a quick say, I'm talking Brandon Graham even. You know, I think that, that that's a guy who I believe dealing with a bit of an ankle issue. So I mean, I'm not certain how much, if at all, he'll play. That's a situation to monitor. But as you mentioned, even even if they were to play, Bradham and Kendricks just, just, just have a brutal matchup. So uh, I'd, I'd say almost say avoid your Eagles this week. So that'd be my line of thought. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's a, a valid thought process. Again, like you say, when, when teams have got it locked up, they're willing to shut down. These guys are going to be crucial to them in the playoffs. All right, let's move on to the some safeties that we like. Again, we touched on one of these gentlemen in the uh, waiver wire and, and briefly mentioned his teammate. We, As you said, this, the, the Patriots are a great matchup for safeties. They are. So, yeah, Jamal Adams and, and Marcus May are the two I want to watch. Um, as I said, May's been quietly consistent without being... Um, you know, spectacular, and, and Adams has been a bit up and down. Um, he's had plenty of good matchups, but he hasn't always performed. But this week, he gets the best matchup. Right. So, yep. Ride your Jets against the Patriots, and well, we always like Harrison Smith. We touched on him earlier. We also like his battery mate back there, Andrew Sandejo, this week against the Bears. Yeah, gone are the days where uh, Sandejo might have been a waiver wire pickup. Uh, if he is, I think this is the right time to go and grab him. Yep, yep, I completely agree with that. We'll move on to the Saints. I believe Kenny Vaccaro has been placed on IR, so that makes a couple of other names uh, have solid matchups this week, and it's Von Bell and Marcus Williams. Yeah, both been in waiver wire pickups during the season. Um, Bell did, you know, put, cause a bit of a quandary earlier in the year, but this is the week when you want to start them both against the Bucks. Right, and again, they, they play on a team with something to play for. The, the Saints are trying to wrap up that uh, NFC South. Uh, being chased by the the Carolina Panthers, so you know they're, they're going to be playing full out against the Tampa Bay offense that's been hit or miss with more miss than hit. And now let's talk about some matchups we're not crazy about. Maybe some players to go ahead and put on your bench, or in some cases just expect lesser performances. And we'll start with the Dallas Cowboys in the, in the matchup with the Eagles. Yeah, Byron Jones and Jeff Heath. Um, the kind of fringe fantasy players uh, have, have flash values at times. Again, pl- players you may well have picked up off the waiver wires to plug and play. But yeah, if, if you have been depending on them, this is time to look elsewhere, unfortunately. Right. And you're probably not going to bench Buda Baker. As we've mentioned, he's about the last man standing now that Bethea is, is, is done with the torn pectoral. But it's not the greatest of matchup this week against the Seahawks. Yeah, Russell Wilson's pretty careful with the football one. Yeah, Butter Baker. You see, he's someone who's been getting in the box and making tackles. So, again, it's it's a limit your expectations rather than a bench. Right. Yeah. Have him in your lineup. Just maybe don't expect the the what was it he had last week? Thirteen total tackles or whatever it was. It, it probably won't be that much. And as you said, the big plays are definitely going to be something that are hard to come by with the way uh, Russell Wilson does does protect the football. Oh, we got just about a minute to go here, boy. We are right on time. And that gives us a chance to talk about a couple of Cincinnati Bengals safeties that don't have the best matchup this week. No, they don't. And again, these are fringe fantasy players, George Ioka and, and Sean Williams. Sean Williams in particular didn't have a full quota of snaps last week, so I tried to find out a little bit more, but nothing seemed to come across the wire. So, But yeah, I, I, again, these are these are fringe players who you ideally wouldn't have to start in, in the championship week, and especially not against a poor matchup like it is against the Ravens. Right, yeah, Baltimore stingy and handing out those those fantasy points to defensive backs. So there you have it, folks. There's there's our best guess through research 
and what we know as to what might happen in week 17 it's it's bound to be wild and and woolly and uh, i'm not certain uh, when our next podcast will be ross i i'd certainly like to do an end of the season maybe hand out some awards podcast uh, we can talk with the higher ups and, and find out what that situation looks like but you know i, I definitely want to get together and have that show yeah for sure that sounds like a great idea i'd, I'd love to do so um, ping back a few emails, get us some categories together, maybe include Jeff in some voting or something. Um, yeah, be be awesome. But I guess I would have to say that until next time, then amigos, adios. Mm-hmm.